welcome to today's touring teacher video all about maths. We're going to be looking at the volume of objects and shapes, so make sure you stay tuned for what we have in store. And before you get started, let's hit that subscribe button so you can see all the other learning videos that I have on the Touring Teacher YouTube channel. Alright, let's get started. First of all, we need to know what is volume. Here we go. Volume is a form of measurement, just like height and length. Volume measures how much space is taken up inside an object. A good way to think about volume is how much water can an object hold? All right, that's a really easy way to help us learn about volume and to understand volume inside objects and shapes. So we can use water to figure out the volume of different shapes and objects that we have. So let's look at three different vessels, cups, vase, different jars that I have in the house to see what the volume of those vessels are. I hope you can help me with this. Okay, so I have three vessels in front of me and this is the final vessel to check the volume of these three vessels. And to check the volume, we're gonna see how much water each vessel can hold. So we're gonna make it a little bit of a game. And looking at the different vessels, we've got a tall skinny one, we've got a short wider one, and a shorter rounded one. So I want you to have a think, you can pause the video here if you need to, and figure out which one of these three will have the largest volume. And then I want you to order it from the smallest volume to the largest volume. And then we're gonna check by pouring the water into this jar and putting a mark at where the water comes up to. They might surprise us. So have a think now of which you think will have the highest volume and which will have the smallest volume. And before we get started, I want to just tell you, I'm not gonna waste this water, I'm gonna use it later to wash my dishes. Okay, so let's start with this tall skinny one. I'm gonna pour it in here and then put a line where it comes up to. Okay, put a line. That's where our tall skinny one comes up to. So now I can pour this water into a bucket while we measure the volume of the other two. Okay, vessel number two, let's see what volume this one has. Ooh, it's just a little bit less water than this one. Now, I would have thought that this one, because it's taller, would have had a larger volume, but I guess because this one's wider, even though it's shorter, they have a similar volume. Let's put a line. Ooh, it's only a tiny bit. Now, what do you think? Did you think this one or this one would have a higher volume? Now, let's see if this one has got more or less. It is exactly the same as this one. So these two vessels have the same volume. I would have thought that they would have been different. Okay, now that we've got our lines, we can put our vessels in order of the largest volume to the smallest volume. So we know that this one was the tiniest bit more. And then we've got this one, we'll do that. And then this one here. So. Were you correct? Did you think that the volume would go in this order or did you have a different order? Maybe while you're at home, you could find some different containers and see if you can guess the volume of them and then test it out just the way that we have done today. Perfect. Now that we know a little bit more about volume, we can start looking at the volume of 3D shapes. And there are some specific rules that we need to use to find the volume of a 3D shape. We're gonna be starting with cuboids because I think they might be the easiest ones to solve. So here are the rules for finding the volume of 3D shapes. Let's have a look. So the rule to find out the volume of a shape is we do the length times the width times the height. And sometimes you might see this written down as L times W times H. And the answer will always be something centimeters cubed. And that little three that you can see at the bottom, that's what cubed stands for. 
Now it might not always be centimeters, it might be meters, kilometers, millimeters, it just depends on how big the shape is that you are measuring. Okay, so you might be thinking, what does she mean by length, width and height? Well, if we look at this shape, we can see that it's got length, width and height written on it. The length is the longest bit down the bottom, the width is how wide the shape is, and the height is how tall the shape is. So you need to make sure when you're looking at a shape, you're looking at the correct places for the length, width and height. To help you guys, I have labeled length, width and height for you because we're learning at the moment. Let's get started by using that rule to find the volumes of these different cuboids. All right, so let's look at this one. Um, how can we find the volume of this shape? We've got length, width and height. Length is five centimeters, width is four centimeters and height is three centimeters. So we need to do length times width first. And then the tricky bit is we need to take whatever that answer is and multiply or times it by the height. So in this little yellow box that has appeared, this is what can help us. We've got length five, width four, height three. So I did five times four for length times width, which equals 20, perfect. Now I need to take that number and multiply it by the height and the height is three. So I'm gonna do 20 times three, which is 60, perfect. Now, as I said before, we're measuring this cuboid in centimeters. So after I've written 60, I need to write centimeters cubed with that little three. So make sure you're doing that as well. All right, hopefully we're getting rolling on this one. Let's try our next one. Right, we have got our length of this cuboid is 10 centimeters. The width is five centimeters and the height is four centimeters. So have a quick think in your head of what are the steps we need to do to make sure that we are multiplying this in the correct order. So what do you think will be the first two numbers that we multiply together? Perfect, we've got length times width. So we're going to do 10 centimeters times five centimeters. I know that you guys know this one. 10 times five is 50, perfect. So let's have that little yellow box pop up again and it can help us with our multiplying. So we've got 10 times five, which equals 50. So we've done length times width. Now we need to multiply by the height. So let's take 50 and multiply it by four. So this one is a bigger number. So this is gonna be 50 times four, which equals, great, 200. And at the end, we need to write centimeters with that little three to make it cubed. You guys are really getting the hang of this. Should we try another one? Yes, let's go. Okay, how can we find the volume of this one? We need to do length times width. We've got eight times two, which is 16. And now we need to multiply 16 by the height. Height is three. So we need to do 16 times three. Ooh, I can feel that you're trying to figure this one out. 16 times three equals 48. All right, so you need to make sure again, we put centimeters cubed at the end. Okay, now I've got your next step of your activity for you. If you need a little bit more practice, you can go back to the other ones and you can change the numbers around to see if you can find the volume for different numbers for different cuboids. This one here, you can pause the video on these three cuboids you can try and solve them before moving on to find the answers. So pause the video, and then when you press play, the answers will come up next. Off you go. Okay, here are the answers. Hopefully you are able to pause the video and do length times width times height, and hopefully your answers match these ones here. Now I've got a next activity that's a big step up and you're gonna to have to use your creative brain as well as your maths brain. I have an irregular cuboid here, which kind of looks like two cuboids put together. I don't want to tell you how to solve this one. I want to see if you can use your knowledge from the other cuboids to see if you can figure this one out. So pause the video here. If you need to, you can use people to help you figure it out but I know that you are smart cookies and you'll be able to put your creative and your maths brain together and see if you can figure out the volume of this irregular cuboid. Have a go. Okay. 
okay, hopefully you've had a go at that irregular cuboid. If you need a little bit more help, here are some steps that you could follow. Firstly, divide the shape into two cuboids. You can see it's A and B, so that might be helpful. Then you find the volume of both cuboids, so cuboid A and cuboid B, and you do that by doing length times width times height. And then when you've got the volume of both different cuboids, at the end, you add the volume of the two different cuboids together, and that will give you your volume of your irregular cuboid. Wow, we have really had our brains moving today. So well done for you guys, and make sure that you go back and go through all the different steps if you need a little bit more practice. And remember, I've got other maths lesson videos for you guys, and lots of other lesson videos for different curriculum areas. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see all the different lesson videos on the Touring Teacher channel. And I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.